Well, everybody, I am back, and you know, whoever I have as the guest for the beginning of the new year, I called Dr. Pam Perry, and I said, I want you to send me the baddest, the most awesome, the most influential, the, the best storyteller, the best person that can talk about manifestation. And within two minutes, she emailed me back and she said, I got your girl. So let me introduce uh, my very special guest today. I want everybody to open up your hearts, open up your spirit. All my folks in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, open up and receive what the spirit has for you. I feel like we, we're really going to be talking about, if this is my first show, who are you? on some level. So my very special guest, and, and you know, the Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. This is a bad sister. Her name is Yolanda M. Smith. He embodies purpose-driven success with the mission to empower others. We all need that right to achieve their optimum best. She's known for her personal branding expertise and business strategy. She founded Branding for Success, where she serves as CEO and another word, which I can't pronounce. I'm going to let her pronounce it. She certified both as a brand uh, analyst in diversity, equity, and inclusion communicator. She is international, y'all. She's an international global speaker and coach, and she empowers entrepreneurs globally in 2023. The Coach Foundation recognized her as a leading personal branding coach, while she also gained distinction as a Forbes BLK member and a 2023 SB Award recipient. My goodness, for outstanding speaker excellence. I tell you, Inc. Magazine celebrated her as one of the most admired women in business for 2022 and she was recognized as 2022's brand analyst of the year on a global level uh, she is the author of two bestsellers reputation to reward notably securing a top 10 finalist spot at the 2020 Arthur Elite Awards and so we're, we're really going to be talking today about who are you, branding yourself. You are the CEO uh, of, your, of the brand called You, How to Brand Your Business and Career in 2024. Yolanda M. Smith, welcome to the Law of Retraction Radio Network. Thank you so much. Oh my God, I'm so excited to be here and Happy New Year to you. It, it's, it's off to a great start. Great it start. is. And what is that big word that I couldn't pronounce? You're the CEO <laughs> and what? And the branthropist. The brand I love that. I love that. So for you, so for my uh domestic listeners, you're in what you're in what state? So, so I I I, I kind of yield two places, but I my primary residence is in Indianapolis, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And then I also uh spend quite a bit of time in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So <laughs> So I go between the two. Okay, I see. I got me a place to go with something when you buy coastal. There you I go. Tell Come you. on and so, visit. We can hang uh, out. <laughs> <laughs> so Yolanda, let's just get right into it. I believe that God has divinely placed you here to help people. Share with people about your story because I know so many people who are ready for change in their business, in their career, but really are afraid to move forward. Share that story. Okay. Well, you know, I'm known to many people as the as the as the branding expert and the branthropist around here. Uh, but what a lot of people don't understand is that, you know, uh, part of your brand is your story, right? And you have to be willing to share your story with others. And and I've got several stories, but one that was very pivotal for me and, and really helped me to understand that I need to be walking and working in my purpose was I was working in corporate America. And interesting enough, my career was going on a great trajectory. I mean, I was getting promotions. I was being recognized. I had great supporters and outlines. Uh, and, and allies. But what happened, it, like most companies do, they go through a restructure, you know, and in 2017, the company actually uh, offered a voluntary retirement. And when I tell you in the blink of an eye, 
every coach, mentor, sponsor, my former leaders all left the company. I mean, it was just such a lucrative package. If you had been there for an extended time, you took it. And so there was a lot of change going on. I was managing a team at the time. They lifted us and moved us to a different area. And so we went over there, didn't know anybody. I mean, because the company's 38,000 people strong, you know, mm -hmm. didn't know anybody. And so I was focused on my team because this change was hard for them and really trying to keep them focused. And literally within two months in walk, the boss from, well, you know what that word is, right? From hell? From hell, honey, from hell. And she didn't know me. She didn't care to get to know me. And I'm telling you, the best way I can describe it is it was World War Me. She was out to get me for whatever reason. And I had just been recognized uh, just uh, uh, literally months before as one of the most influential women in Indianapolis by the Indianapolis Business Journal. I had won just prestigious awards at this company. I was doing great work. And I think it just was one of those situations where I she had a different cred credential than I had. So hers had a clinical credential, which you could say maybe she was an MD. Mm -hmm. and, and so she felt like that trumped my MBA, you know. But long story short, kept poking and prodding at me. And I knew I hadn't done anything. So I just kind of sat back and let her do it. Well, one day I was sitting there uh, working from home because we, we could kind of work from home from time to time and the phone rang and it was HR and HR calls and says, Yolanda, I need, we need to speak with you. I said, okay, can you come to the office? I said, sure. What's it about? So they're like, well, we'll tell you when you get there. And I'm like, okay, great. This thing is finally over. <laughs> they going to promote me. They're going to do something. I'm excited, right? I'm thinking this is going to be over. I get to the office and I walk in and I see them there. And I mean, the faces were stoic, right? I'm like, oh Lord, this is not going to be good. So as I'm sliding down into the chair, mm -hmm. the next words I hear is that we're demoting you and we're taking away your team. And I'm wow. thinking, demoting me, taking my team for what? This is a team that I had built from the ground up six and a half years prior. This woman didn't know anything about what I had done, didn't know, you know, but, but it was one of those things where, I mean, I was so devastated in that moment, because if you think about it, everything you've worked hard for just came crashing down. One person can do that to you. And so literally, as I sat there devastated, that devastation turned into disappointment. That disappointment quickly turned into anger. I mean, I'm talking about to the point where I was literally holding back that one tear that wants to come down your cheek. Mm -hmm. I'm refusing to give them the satisfaction to know that they hurt me. They have crushed me in this moment. Long story short, I took some time and really had to process this. I was praying, you know, asking God to really just give me the wisdom to know what I need to do. Uh, and ultimately, I knew I didn't want to go back there. But what came in my spirit was you got two things to ponder. One is do you take any accountability? And then number two is, are you going to allow one person to define your destiny? Mm. And so to number one, I say, yes, I had to take some accountability. You see, I have been teaching personal branding since 2013. So I everything that I was teaching other people, I neglected to do because you must tell your story. You must build connection and relationship. So we go to this new department. I had two months where I could have, you know, made some connections and some relationships and I neglected to do that, focusing on my team. So she was allowed to run the narrative about me. Mm -hmm. So imagine if I had built the relationships, those people would have been looking at her like, that's not the Yolanda we know. Okay, that seems kind of odd. But because I didn't, they were probably sitting back constant going, Really? Mm, you don't say she did what? So it probably became a gossip fest, right? And everybody's looking at me like I'm this horrible person. But then when I thought about the second question to ponder, do you give that much power to one person over in control over your life? I said, absolutely not. And I had to humble myself. Humility, that's a great trait to be able to execute on, right? Because the ego can get in our way when you have those big titles, you know, and you what was feel your like title? You made it. At that point, I was the director over external relations in the U.S. medical division. That sounds and, really big. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it was director level. So that's mid management, mm -hmm. but it was the fact that I was running all the training programs for future healthcare providers and really impacting our external footprint 
with the healthcare industry. So it was a big role, you know, and the fact that I was able to sort of define that role. I mean, it's like somebody snatching your baby from you, if you, if you will, you know. So bottom line is I had to humble myself and, and just say, what are you going to do? And I just said, you know what? She doesn't get that control over me. So I literally had to put my big girl pants on, <clears throat> you know, hold my head up high because I knew who I was. Now, that was the one thing that I had to my advantage. I was a confident young lady and I knew who I was. So I wasn't going to allow her to get to determine to the world who I was, determine my brand, tarnish my credibility. So I went back in and started working and, and, and it was a shocker for everybody to see me return. They thought I was gone, you know, and I showed up and then I started building those relationships. I was always a performer. So that wasn't, that wasn't anything new, but I was putting my brand out there, building those relationships, networking, you know, getting linked in with the right influential people, re-establishing my mentors and my coaches. And literally, I'm telling you, doing that work in a year and a half later, I was tapped for another position to actually start up a new department again. Wow. That, that, yeah. That's amazing. And I know some people that are listening right now. What strategies would you give to folk who are in their career and they know they should leave, they're unhappy, but that comfort zone, what would you, what could you say to people who are working in an organization? Uh, I got a couple of people in my mind right now mm -hmm. and they know they should take that jump, that leap, et cetera. Oh. You know, we know it can be scary, but one of the things I believe is that fear and faith cannot coexist. So if you have faith and you believe in yourself and you believe in something higher than yourself, right? If you have that faith, that faith will sustain you. That fear will paralyze you. And so even me, I can be honest and transparent and say, I should have been gone then, but I didn't. I should have left right then, honestly. I should have left right then and went ahead and did what I know I was I was actually destined to do. But what I did do is I started my company at that time. And so I was working my company parallel to mm. working in the organization. So sometimes you just have to be strategic about the moves you make because you don't want to put yourself in a position that you may be financially bankrupt, you know, or you may be uh, emotionally bankrupt. You want to, you want to, you want to know that with beyond a shadow of a doubt, you believe in you. That's the first thing. Cause that mind is powerful. You know, we talked about manifestation and the mindset, but more than that, I think at some point you've got to say, am I willing to take a bet on me? If I'm staying someplace where people don't value me, where people don't see me, Mm. Is that really where I should be? Because there's no way, I can tell you this beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you're operating at your optimal best. There's just no way. You're Every day is a struggle. Every day you're on the defense. Think about it. We do our best work when we're in an offensive position. We don't do our best work when we're, unless you may be an attorney or something, you know, <laughs> the attorney's got to be on the defense. But But if you think about it, when, there, when there's not that level of pressure and you can operate in your gifts and your talents and your skills, and I know you can't do that if you're feeling every day, you got to go in and either code switch because you can't bring your authentic self to work. Mm -hmm. You're going to change to be who you think they want you to be so that you can be successful. That's not, that's not going to give you a level of satisfaction and satisfied people don't perform at their best. And if you don't perform at your best, you're not achieving optimal results. And so I love that. It becomes cyclical. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there and I know, uh, you know, you know, God wants us to get out of our comfort zone because on the other side of that door are just unlimited mm. possibilities. Mm. You spoke a little bit about manifesting just generally. What could you say to people about, about manifesting anything for yeah. 2024? I think, I think the first thing is you have to be honest with yourself and say, where is the state of your mind at that particular point? Mm -hmm. There's two types of mindset, right? There's that fixed mindset and there is the growth mindset. That fixed mindset is the mindset that without us going deep into it, I can, I can just give you two examples, two, okay. two examples. One is 
that's the person that allows life to happen to them. Mm -hmm. The growth mindset is the person that makes life happen for them. So, so if we look at it that way, you're just kind of whatever comes your way, you just take it, you know, whether it's the good, the bad, or the ugly. The growth mindset says I have an opportunity to develop, to grow, to do the things that I need to do to get where I need to be. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to take chances. I'm willing to, to make mistakes as a process, as a part of the process so that I can get where I want to go. So that's the person that chooses to design their destiny versus you over here, allowing something else, someone else to define you and what you're allowed to do. And so when you think about manifestation to me, it's operating in that growth realm, but it's also then really consciously getting rid of and eliminating those limiting beliefs. The things that we believe about our, it's usually three areas. It's ability, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's our time, right? And, and, and it's our, and it's our, 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 our belief system. So, so if our attitudes and beliefs say we can't do it, then we won't. If we feel like we don't have the time, no, well, ability, time, and money, sorry, ability, time, mm -hmm. and money. So whether you feel like you can do it or not, you know, or will they believe you, or they're not going to think that I'm capable of that, or they're never going to give me the promotion. So when you talk that way, when you have that negative self-talk, you've already talked yourself out of something. And let me tell you why. Our natural tendency is to only give the amount of energy to anything we do based on the outcome we believe we're going to achieve. That's powerful. You teach so it. You, if you've already said you're not going to get the promotion, if you already said you're not going to get the contract or the client, you likely won't. Because when you show up, you're thinking you're there and, and you're on your A game. But subconsciously and through your body language and everything else, you're not. And so when they pass you over, listen to this, this is powerful. When they pass you over, then guess what? You feel a sense of validation because as humans, we want to validate our own assumptions. And then mm. you go, see, I told you they weren't going to pick me. See, I told mm -mm. you. That's good. That's yes. great teaching. But you remove that. And you go in with a positive, limitless mindset, knowing that you deserve it, knowing that you are worthy, knowing that you have the skills and capabilities to achieve whatever you desire to achieve, knowing that opportunities are out there just waiting for you just to grab at them. When you operate that way, knowing you claim in that job, you're claiming that promotion, you're claiming that increase. You know, you're claiming to live in abundance. When you start doing that, then that's the manifestation because it's the law of attraction. We attract what we put out there. So if you're always spewing negative and you're the Debbie Downer and you're giving all that energy, that's what you attract. Powerful. I love it. Oh, that's so powerful. You know, I heard, let's let's talk about branding. I heard you say, uh, yeah, I've been listening to everything on, on YouTube and, and, and everything that she's been teaching on. You are the CEO of the brand called You. Yes. So what is branding and why is that important? Branding is, let me put it this way. It's a requirement, not an option in today's environment. So that, mm. that makes it essential. You know, it, it's not a, do I want to do it? If I need to do it, you absolutely should do it. If you're not doing it, you're operating at a disadvantage. Personal branding is really your ability uh, to be able to articulate the value that you deliver to others. Personal branding is about you operating in your authenticity and how you uniquely serve other people. So what is your unique value proposition? How can you help other people achieve their goals? See, where people get confused is they think personal branding is all about them and your I, 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 me, 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 look, look at me, this, that, and the other. But really it's your ability to help other people understand what you can deliver to them based on the value you can provide, your gifts, your talents, your skills, your network, these sort of things. See, it's the relationship that other people have with you. You know, I love what Jeff Bezos said. Jeff Bezos said it best. He said, personal branding 
is what people say about you when you leave the room. Mm -hmm. So when you leave the room and they're gossiping because they will, is it positive or is it negative? It's that imprint, that footprint, that stamp that you put in the minds of other people. It's how you're memorable. So think about that. But you have the opportunity to shape what that looks like to the world. If you are not telling your story, somebody else is. And that can be risky. And you just heard that from my own personal story. That, you know, you say that so eloquently and even every word just so, so beautifully describes and defines exactly, you know, what branding would look like. So for people who are thinking about going into business and who are in business, what would be some strategies that you could share with them around branding? So I think I think the first step is really understanding that personal branding does pertain to you. Mm. I think before we would think it's Hollywood stars, politicians, athletes, but since 2020 and the pandemic and everything uh, really forcing us into a, a, a digital environment in a much larger way, we all have to take ownership of our brand. And so <clears throat> when you think about that, you have to say to yourself, who am I? The first thing is to understand, who are you? How are you showing up? Are you showing up as your authentic self? You know, what is it that you want to represent to the world? So essentially there's five steps that I've, I've developed, uh, you know, in, in a, in a, in a, in a uh, sort of a, a formula, if you will, that says, if you can do these five things well, you can likely have a powerful personal brand. And one of the things we know is that people with powerful brands have opportunities above, above and beyond people that don't, right? They get recognized for the expertise. They can be the sought after authority versus the, the best kept secret. They can earn up to 25% more. Studies suggest that. I mean, so there's a lot of benefits to having this, but it first starts with who are you and are you being authentic? You know, mm. because think about it. We need to be able to build genuine connections. I'm not talking about just getting somebody to 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 accept your connection on on the Facebook. You can have a gazillion connections that way, but can you build the relationships and have the meaningful connections? Number two is that value. Understanding what is your value, what what is that? What does that look like? And then number three is your story. How, are, are you willing to open up and tell the story? What is that story? Or even to the extent that if somebody just says, who are you? You meet, you meet that person. I got another story, boy. You meet that person and you have an opportunity, somebody who's influential that you want to really get to know. And they say, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. What are you going to say? Are you going to do like me that in 20, 2009, when I met the CEO of the company and stutter and utter out your job title? Because you're not your job title. At the time, there was probably 200 people that had that same job title. So I didn't make an impression there. Or are you going to be able to tell somebody something very uh, compelling and memorable about you? So if you say, Yolanda, who are you? I'm going to tell you I'm a people growth leader and branthropist with a passion to help coaches and entrepreneurs and professionals to get and stay in business by unleashing the power of their personal brand. Through my systems, formulas, and guidance, I help you to be able to articulate your value, be authentic, and stand out so that you can have influence, impact, and income. So, that, so, you, men so you mentioned who are you? Uh, knowing your values, having a story, and is there another one? Creating a positive digital footprint is number four. You want to create that positive digital footprint because I'm a believer. If I Google you and nothing comes up, you don't exist. Not in today's mm. because mm -hmm. what I know is pre-pandemic, seventy-nine percent of employers and recruiters were going to your profile. Now we know we're post pandemic now, it's probably 90 something percent. When you want to engage, do business with somebody, you want to be, uh, you know, you like when you met me, you, what did you do? You immediately go out and look at somebody's social media to mm -hmm. see how they're showing up. What does it look like? Who are they, right? 
So that is so critical that you have a positive digital footprint, that you are the same person online that you are offline because you don't want to create brand confusion because guess what? Confused people don't buy, period. And then number five is brand mastery because you can come up with the great, wonderful magnetic messaging, but then can you activate on it? Can you put your actions behind those words? Are you engaging? Are you really getting into action? Are you building the relationships? Are you adding the value to the people that you're called to serve? If you do that well, then you become known. I want to unpack some of that. You know, you, you mentioned value. So entrepreneurs need to know their own value. So do you believe that at some point folk need to look at, you know, what are my limiting beliefs? What are, you said you were very confident. A lot of people may not be. That's correct. And may be trying to step out and and do something, but that subconscious mind is driving 95% of who we are. So So do people need to delve deep into who are you and what's that stuff on the inside of you? What's your take around that? Well, let me just say this. When I work with my clients, because I do coaching as well as the mm -hmm. speaking, but when I work with my clients, that's the first work we do. We got to go in. Who are you? I help you understand. I mean, and sometimes it gets a little heavy, right? Because there have been experiences that could have potentially been traumatic in their childhood or, or even within the workplace that has really chipped away at their level of confidence, their self-esteem, if you will. And so one of the things I do is try to help to build people back up, to help them really recognize who you are. Look at some of the remarkable things we do, because a lot of times we are our worst critic and don't give ourselves credit for the things that we have done, the experiences that we've gone through. The fact that you can go through some things and come out of it makes you strong, Absolutely. you know, but you don't realize that you're still stuck back here. And so I think it's really adapting the tools necessary, you know, employing those techniques that will help you be conscious about how you speak to yourself, how you think about yourself, because we already know our beliefs drive our thoughts, our thoughts drive our actions, right? Our actions drive the results we achieve or do not achieve, right? And so with that, it's you've got to go there. You've got to be willing to go there and be honest with yourself. Because one of the things I do know is once you become conscious about it, Mm -hmm. then you can stop it because the one thing we can control are our thoughts. Believe it or not, you can stop your thoughts in your tracks. And one of the techniques I teach is that be conscious of the negative self-talk. You know, I call it the little, the little person on your shoulder that you're saying, oh my God, you're excited. I want to do X, Y, Z. And it goes, mm -hmm. what do you want to do that? You can't do that. What makes you think they'll let you, you know, that's that negative self-talk, but you have the ability to stop it right then and ask yourself, why did I just think that right in this moment? What was it that would tell me that I couldn't do it? And then you have the opportunity to say, little person on that shoulder, you go away <laughs> right now. I'm not dealing with you. I'm moving forward. I'm staying focused on what I believe I can do. Once you do that more often, then what you find is that that voice becomes less and less because then you start to build that confidence. You know, and then I teach some other methods as well to do that because it's a process. Don't get me wrong. If you've been thinking for years a certain way about yourself, you're not going to change it overnight, but you can change it if you really want to do that. And by just doing some things very intentionally and being aware of how you're sabotaging yourself in your own mindset. So what you, you mentioned digital, a positive digital imprint. What what would you say to entrepreneurs? I, I have some of my clients say, well, you know, I'm a behind the scenes person. I'm private. I don't want to do no videos. How do you move your clients and maybe all of the listeners beyond that whole mindset? So I think first you have to say to yourself, okay, what is it that you're trying to accomplish? I mean, there are people that can work behind the scenes just fine and, and they will be successful at doing what they do, right? Again, it's what you want to accomplish. But if you're looking to be that influencer, to be that, that expert in that area of the thing that you do well, you're going to have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. 
I am one of those that admittedly I can post all day, but to sit down and do videos, I think that I'm not that great at it. Right. I, you know, and, and it's like, I, I'm not the most tech savvy person. So I see some of my friends videos and they got all kind of cute stuff flying <laughs> in and whatever. And I'm mad because mine is over here shaking or whatever, you know, but again, it's be willing to be authentic, yes, you know, just, yes. I'm not good at it. okay. It's not my thing. Right. But, but, but it's simply saying, okay, I'm going to be comfortable being uncomfortable because this is necessary. And I think what you find is that people will then relate to that story, not your glory. They don't need to see you all buttoned up and perfect in this, because if that's the case, then you become less and less relatable, right? They want to see the flaws. They want to see the journey. You know, I, I mean, and, 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 and it's just not so much the glory, it's the progress versus the perfection. So Ooh, be, I love that. Yes. So be okay. Just not being this perfect social media will fool you into thinking everybody's life is perfect. Honey, they on there flexing and, and I call it posturing. You, you buy these cars, got these handbags up and all this sort of stuff. When you know good and well, your life is falling apart. Now, I'm not saying you got to get on social media and say my life is falling apart. But I think what you have to do is you have to try to be the most authentic you you can be. And when you're that, the people that you need to reach, the people that you need to connect with will respect that and you will make those connections. You know, the interesting thing, you know, before we started this recording, I said to you, I said, now, I don't know how to pronounce one of these words. And I said, I'm going to let you pronounce it. And I intentionally did that for the listeners, my audience, because I don't want to come across as perfect. And, mm -hmm. and so many people have said to me, and I tell the editors, don't edit that out. I want mm -hmm. people to see and feel that that yeah. this is the real deal. We're real people. I mean, I'm one of those, if I start and, and I may stumble on a word or something, I just correct the word and keep going. We can't, it, I'll be doing 20 takes on a video if everything yeah. has to be absolutely perfect. And then you just realize that it's not necessary. I think, you know, at the end of the day, for those people that are really unsure, they don't want to do it. They, you can do one or two things, you know, you can, you can find your who, Find somebody that can support you in doing it if you don't want to do it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Find somebody that can support you in doing it. Or you have to really come to have that come to Jesus with yourself and say, am I willing then to sit back and not get all the opportunities that perhaps are out there waiting for me because nobody knows me? And so your personal brand has the ability, has the ability to make you go from invisible to unforgettable. From being that best kept that. to the sought after authority, being the person that gets the promotion versus the person that watch is the person that gets the promotion. So it's not about bragging. Yeah. It's about you helping other people know who you are and what value you can provide to them. Because if I don't know it, I can't tap you on the shoulder for it. I love that. I see why you won one of the most outstanding speaker awards. I mean, you have that gift. You're articulate. Your words just pull people in. So so you mentioned master. People must master. Uh, you also said cultivate and master. What would that look like in an entrepreneur's life? Yeah. So So what that means is that you're really taking what you know as your brand to be and you're amplifying it out there in the marketplace, right? You're activating it in the marketplace. So brand amplification is really you helping people know who you are. And you're mm. doing that through making connections on social media by adding value on social media, putting your videos out there, helping people understand who are you, some of the stories and things that you've gone through, why you're passionate about doing what you do, why this is important, why you want to help other people. I mean, you've got to get, people have to know you. If they don't know you, they can't flow you. Because one of the Ooh. things you know is what? People do business with people they know, like, and trust. I love that. I love that. So give me an example of maybe one of your clients who you uh, helped coached in branding and how 
uh, that coaching or that training has really shifted and changed their life from being invisible to unrecognizable? So I, ha I have a client and she was in corporate America working in mm -hmm. a healthcare company uh, in, in the legal realm, but at a high executive. And her situation was, as people thought she was too ambitious, you ever get that, you know, we, in the, in the workplace now we get these micro aggressions, you know, yeah. uh, um, it's, it's amazing. I've, I've been told I'm intimidating, you know, you just, you're doing too much, you know, she was told she was ambitious. And then like me ended up getting a new leader. The team ran the narrative to the leader. She wasn't putting her brand out there, activating on her brand. And then all of a sudden the leader started questioning everything she does, questioning her leadership, really making her feel devalued, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. She came to me and uh, I started working with her, helping her to, you know, activate on the five steps of building your personal brand. So she started doing that, activating. And I said, but here's the key. Don't just do it internally at the workplace. Do it externally, too. Because, see, I believe, first of all, I believe, listen, after that situation that happened to me, you should never have all your eggs in one basket. I believe in multiple streams of income. That's just me. At a minimum, you need three three strains of income. And so I told her, I said, we got to get you out into the digital environment. Well, lo and behold, she started doing the things I said for her to do. And next thing I know, she started building partnerships and networking. Well, less than a year later, she ends up leaving the corporate job because she started her own consulting business, had two partnerships lined up that paid her three times her corporate salary in less than a year. That's the power of a brand. You know, when I look at, you know, even the things I've done or helping people to scale their business, here's the thing to know. If you are an entrepreneur and you don't have a household name yet, because most of us don't, you know, that's why they call it entrepreneurship. We're not a Nike. We're not a Starbucks. We're not the Adidas yet. You are the brand. And so you've got to be willing to put your face out there be that brand, be that person that is willing to show up and get build the connection so that people know, like, and trust you and then put your company under it. So I'm Yolanda M. Smith, branding for success. Mm -hmm. But Yolanda is the brand. The face you're, you're it. This is it. You are the brand. And so it's just helping people understand that because we were quick to throw a company name out there that has no recognition whatsoever. And you can eventually get there, you know, as the years go by and you start to really be able to build the momentum you need out in the marketplace and people know who you are. Then they come and they are now tapping on your door, seeking your services, right? Looking for you. So again, a powerful personal brand, it gives you the opportunity to be that person that is not chasing clients, you're attracting them. Big difference. So Big. for people who are who decided I'm going to still work uh, you know, in my career and in my job, they they should still be using these five strategies that you share in the workplace. Absolutely. Because think about it. If you want to advance your career, if you're looking, you know, to be promoted, to sit on boards, to be affiliated with some of the powerful organizations connected to your industry, you still need to have a brand. People need to know what is the expertise that you can offer, right? And if you're looking to get promoted, you have to be within the organization networking and building those relationships two levels up, right? Because when I was at my level, I'm up here talking to the vice president. I'm in the room with, with the people. They're like, how did you do that? Well, I just was strategic. You have to be strategic about it, but it's about strategically positioning yourself so that people know you is strategically raising your hand and saying, I would love a special project. You know, if there's anything available, making yourself available to be able to do things, but wanting to be that person that people understand exactly what value you provide so that before that job's even posted, guess what? They're tapping you on the shoulder saying, we have something that we think you may be interested in. I love that. So, so Yolanda, what does it feel like to have all of these wars? I mean, come on, girl, you know, uh, uh, SB recipient and, you know, all of these Forbes, uh, what does that feel? Are you surprised or is that just who you are? 
because we 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 know that you don't attract what you want you attract and manifest who you are your mm -hmm. being but what does that feel like to you you know i think if i had to be perfectly honest i'm not driven by that that stuff mm -hmm. i i think, I think and, and and we laugh about it because over my career yes i've gotten lots of accolades mm -hmm. uh, one person said you you know you got more decoration you're more decorated than a christmas tree but here's <laughs> the reality here's the reality my greatest satisfaction comes when i know that i've played a role in someone's life and help them to get to the next level, to get what they wanted, to see the success that they wanted, to see them elevate in their career, in their business, to help them grow, to see that confidence build. You know, it's really about, that's my satisfaction about really pouring into people and seeing them follow the guidance. And then all of a sudden they start to blossom and a new person emerges and the, and the opportunities, you know, arise. On the flip side, yes, it's nice to get these things, right? To be recognized. There, there's, there's no greater satisfaction than somebody recognizing you for the work that you're doing, the skills and the talent that you can bring to the, to, to the things that you do. So it's good, but it's much more better to see it manifest in the people that I serve. So what my last question, what about money and entrepreneurship? Should the focus be on I'm going to start this business because I want to, you know, I want the bag. I, I want, I want money. I want to be a millionaire. What's your thinking around that? Oh, you know, so, so should here. money be the motive or the driver or should serving mm -hmm. and solving a problem and being a solution, which came first, the, the chicken or the egg? You know what? At the end of the day, we don't chase money. We chase our purpose. If you're chasing money, it's not sustainable. And I tell people all the time, you're hustling backwards. Mm -hmm. You're hustling backwards because you're going to always find yourself in a very reactive mode, always chasing the dollar, chasing the shiny penny, looking for the thing. You ever meet those people, they'll sell you anything. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, I'm a business person, but you selling bubble gum over here. You got a coloring book <laughs> shirt over here a hair I mean I don't I don't say that there's anything wrong with that but that that's somebody that's hustling if you're really wanting to make an impact and 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 the best way to do that is to operate in your purpose and passion and serve the reward will come back to you they come back and I mean abundantly so while money is important don't get me wrong our relationship our mindset with money needs to change too because we need to understand that we don't need to feel bad for getting people to pay us for our value. We as women, so and particularly true. Black women, undercharge so much because sometimes we don't even know our own value. Yeah. But if you're sitting here and you got 20, 30 years of experience, look at all that you can offer somebody. You can go get branding anywhere. You can go online and get information about branding. But the value of having somebody like me is that I am going to take all that information, all that clutter that's out there and distill the complex to make it practicable, actionable for you. I'm going to share with you how to do it because guess what? I've done it. I've seen the results. I've seen other clients do it. So I think really when you think about the money, the money will come if you serve, if you can operate in your passion. So I, there's a lot of things cropping up right now. Everybody wants a home care business, right? Because it's lucrative right now. But are you really positioned? Is that where is that truly where your heart is? Is yeah. that where your passion is? Or are we just chasing these shiny pennies? My goal is to help my 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 vision right now is to help 100,000. I saw women, that. Mm -hmm. Yes, to be able to really unlock their potential by unleashing the power of their brand so that they can have success and joy in this lifetime. And to do that, I cannot let you chase the shiny penny because to do that, it's not going to give you sustainability. You already know the statistics say that the majority of businesses are out of business within five years. So how can I help you to create sustainable frameworks for your business, to create a powerful brand that is going to leave you here for the long term so that you can leave generational wealth, you can leave legacy. That's what it's about. 
Love it. Yolanda, do you have any upcoming um, masterminds or events? How can people find you? How can they coach with you? What is your uh, website information? All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always busy. Yolanda okay. is busy. Yes. As a matter of fact, January the 11th, I'm doing a free event. It's complimentary to the public. It's called the VSGB. That's your vision, uh, uh, strategy, goal, and branding masterclass where I want people to really get out of the gate strong in 2024. So we'll be talking about what are some techniques and strategies you can use to make sure that you're ready uh, to really be able to get the results that you want to get. Uh, and so they can just visit the website. It's YolandaMSmith.com, YolandaMSmith.com. Visit the website and go under uh, coaching and you can find it there. Uh, or people can contact me at info at branding for success. That's the number four, info. I love that. For success. And then in February, I will be doing our five-day challenge. This is a challenge where if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an aspiring entrepreneur, I work with corporate professionals wanting to build uh, you know, a business, whether it's a side hustle, whether you're looking to transition, or you're going to just take that leap of faith and go and catch your wings on the way down. I give you five full days of, of some of everything. I mean, this, this, this challenge is amazing to prepare you and position you, you know, for, for, for the success that you desire in your life to really be able to not only start to manifest it, but get into action so that you can have a game plan. You know, there's nothing like being unprepared, you know, you, you wow. won't get it. You got to build that plan and then you work it. Uh, so th those are ways. And obviously follow me on social media. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, typically, if you put in Yolanda M. Smith or you put in branding at branding for success, you'll find me branding for success with the number four. Yeah. We'll make sure we include all of that in the show description, Miss Yolanda. Right. I tell you what, when Dr. Pam said, I have just the woman for you, you are amazing, astounding, mm -hmm. anointed in mm -hmm. your gift and your calling. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you really want someone to assist you in branding yourself, your business, go to her website, Yolanda M. Smith. I've been on it, checking it out. And uh, she is, you see who she is. She's already showed you that. You, you've you already connected with her. You see, you see how authentic she is and what a master she is and how she values herself. And uh, I, I am just so honored that you are the first guest in my 15th year of being the host on the Law of Attraction Radio Network. So grateful, so thankful thank for you. Thank you for the opportunity. Definitely, this has been a pleasure. You're welcome. So everybody, I want you to share this video with your friends. Anybody who you know might be interested in uh, becoming an entrepreneur, anybody who wants to go to the next level. You know, God wants your joy to be full and he, he uh, sends gifts into our lives to help us live our best life and you're looking or listening to one of them thank you again everybody make a decision to declare and decree that 2024 is just my best year ever it's the beginning of the best years of my life have a great week thank you again Yolanda thank you